Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. Today we have a familiar face. We have Niels or Imperta Lang coming on the show once again to actually demonstrate his Epson language that he's looking to close the gap for developers on Cardano with. Thank you very much for coming back on Niels. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You know, very, very interesting last um, talk that we had. For anybody that hasn't seen that, there's a link in the description. Well worth a watch. Um, we've got you back and hopefully to demonstrate the language. Sure. Nothing nothing more happy than that. So uh, I will share my screen with you and then we can just drop right into it. Perfect. And bearing in mind, guys, I am not a programmer. I am not a tech savvy individual. Uh, so this is going to be interesting. So um, wait, wait, let me let me just give you a, a quick intro in, into what Cardano smart contracts are actually doing. So um, for some context for the viewers uh, that have not yet clicked on the on the last video, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm building a smart contract language that's based on Python. And Python is a really it's a designed to be easy to understand programming language. And um, you can build Cardano smart contracts with that. And how, how these contracts work on Cardano is that um, they are resident at some address on the blockchain. And you can always send funds to these addresses but then if you want to get funds from there, normally for normal users, they would sign with their own key, but with a with a smart contract, there is no key. There's just a smart contract. So what happens on the chain is if you want to spend funds, the node is gonna compute the program, the contract. And if that contract says, yes, go ahead, spend these funds, then you're good to go. If the contract fails or there's some error or it says no, uh, then you cannot spend the funds. So um, if uh, I've pre prepared a short contract here and uh, what you can see uh, is there's one function that's called the validator. And you have to imagine we are now at the situation where someone sent funds to an address and we want to spend them and upon spending them, we have to, the, the validator function is called. So what this contract is supposed to do, you send funds and you attach uh, the, the key hash of, of the person who can withdraw it. So um, when this function is, so, so when you lock the funds, you send money and you attach a datum and this datum contains uh, the, the key hash. And at the moment you want to unlock, um, the person with that key hash will have to sign the transaction that unlocks the funds. So essentially you're, you're building something, part of that is spending these funds, and then you have to put under that your digital signature, which is the one that's noted in the datum. Yeah, I'm with you. Perfect. So um, how is this function gonna be called? Well, there are three arguments to this function. That means the first one is the cancel datum. This is what we attached to the original transaction. Then there's a redeemer. We will ignore it for now, but it's it's like a way to specify some additional information, live when spending. And then there's the context, and the context is provided uh, by the node as you as you evaluate the transaction. The context compiles some auxiliary information about the transaction and, and passes it to the contract. So the contract kind of knows what's happening around it more than the datum that's being spent. So um, yeah, what we want to do is to make sure that the signature of the person that's in this pubkey hash, uh, that's, that's in this datum, this datum contains one field, it's the it's a, it's a pop key hash, but this is a list. Let's start with a single single hash. Uh, we want to make sure that um, there's a signature present that corresponds to this hash. So if we want to try, uh, go ahead, I'm, I'm typing on the bottom now. If we're gonna try and compile this, um, 
it's called the gift contract because it essentially gift money to someone okay then Epson will tell you well uh the the variable that we're checking here is not initialized yet so we okay. have to put it put it to some value let's say for example signature present is false well okay now in any case the signature will not will be will be marked as not available and the contract will compile if it works but it will always fail which is bad yeah so let's see how do we know who signed the transaction well in the data we only know what was sent with the initial thing the redeemer is missing so let's have a look at the script context yep and um, that script context contains a purpose which we ignore now it says uh is this contract invoked for spending as transaction or you can also invoke contracts for minting tokens for for withdrawing rewards we will ignore this for now but it's 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 uh, uh, it's also possible to write contracts for that. In this case, it will be spending. And then there's some more information. Let's see what's what's there as information. There's what kind of inputs are, are we spending? What kind of outputs are we spending? Uh, how much fee is going to be paid? Uh, when is this transaction valid? And then that's the important part for us. Who are the signatories? Who put the digital signature under this transaction? Okay. So that's a list of hashes. And if we check back here, that's bytes, but actually that's the same as a pubkey hash. Pubkey hash is bytes. Yeah. So uh, that checks out from the types and um, also it contains the information that we actually want, the signatories. So let's go ahead and um, we just loop through this list. So let's say four every signature in context now we access the info object now we access the signatories yep and now we we just say okay uh if the signature equals to we have the datum dot pubkey hash then the signature is actually present so we override it and say this is true so all you need is the pub key hash and it basically overwrites it, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So what's actually that's that's very convenient for us. It's not there's no signature actually being invoked here. It's just a list of people that signed rather than we us having to to verify that the signature is correct or anything. You just know that uh in the end this person will will have signed this transaction. And then if this is the same, um that's fine. And now we say, okay, good to go. Transaction can can uh, return. And we try to compile and it works. Wow. You know, I don't feel like I should have been able to understand any of that, but somehow I have. So am I a am I a programmer now? <laughs> <laughs> well, the only way to become a real programmer is to program yourself. Yep. For sure. So we can try and uh, spice this contract a bit up. Okay. So now we actually have a gift and it may be withdrawn by a number of people. So instead of a single pubkey hash, we now have a list. Yeah. So you have a list of people, right? A list exactly. of Yeah. Okay. And now we want to cheat, uh, see if any of these signatories is in, in this list or if any of the... Uh, but it... Of it the, the signatures will be in the list, right? Because it's only the pub key hash that you're using. Is that right? Yeah. Well, um, we have to ensure when the when the money is spent that that transaction is signed by the correct person. So what the, what the takes info signatures gives us is who actually signed the transaction. But it might be that no one who is here in this in this list, so say, I, I'm I'm creating this transaction and allowing us both of us to withdraw the money. Like I put our pubkey hashes into this list and then we have a list two two pubkey hashes there. And now uh a Paul comes and wants to withdraw the transaction. He doesn't know our our hashes. But he doesn't know he knows maybe our hashes but not the secret key. So he cannot sign the transaction. And then we will get a script context where in these signatories uh neither of our signatures is there. 
So okay. we need to we need to actually ensure that it's there, which previously we have done like this, or we could do even more succinctly in sig present is uh, the datum pubkey hash is in the context takes info the signatures. That's kind of the shortcut to writing this. But what Python allows it to do, it's somewhere in there. And now we have a list of hashes. And now we may need to make sure that any of these uh, hashes is present in the signatures list. OK. And if they are present, it's go ahead for the contract to execute. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. That seems very, very um, understandable, which is, uh, like I say, I I've looked at various other languages, and I'm just like, <laughs> I have I don't even know whether to make heads or tails. This seems like reading English, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So let me add the last touch for this, because if we now have the list and you try to compile this, then we'll tell you, well, you cannot compare the byte string and the list for equality because it's not the same thing. One is the list of elements and one is that. So what you can do is uh, now we replace this with in. So we say the signature is in in the list of pubkey hashes. And if that's good, then we're good to go. So let's try it and it goes. Wow. And this bottom bit, can you talk to me a little bit about what's going on? Is that just the actual? Yeah. It being executed because I can't quite understand that bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's kind of the assembly. That's the low, okay. the lowest level of language. So what Epstein does for you, and you, you usually don't have to care about it. What what you can do basically is you can say Epstein build, and then it will just put all the things that you need: the the mainnet address, the testnet wow. address, the policy ID, and and the Pluto script and everything. We'll just put it in a machine readable format and the addresses for you into into a folder. But if you want to see what's what's going on below the the hood to so to say, what's happening is that this Python language is then compiled or or transpiled into a low level functional language, which is called anti Plutus core. And that's that's just functions being applied to each other and, and, and wow. variables bound and everything. But the, the core thing we need to understand is that we can compile, we can we can translate this Python code into this uh, un this ununderstandable gibberish of, of of code. But the node can handle this code, and that's that's the important part. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like to me at the bottom. Un <laughs> understandable gibberish. Um, yeah. So I mean, no yeah, way you you'll be able to read this, but. The, the idea about Epsilon is that you don't need to understand this. You, you can write something simple and then it will translate to the complex stuff. So if I'm getting this right, if you manage to successfully, and, and you already have done a, deployed a smart contract with uh, Epson, yeah. um, somebody like me who has zero, you know, programming language experience may be writing and deploying smart contracts on top of Cardano. That, that's, that's a possible. scary I mean, thought, guys. <laughs> I, I cannot, I cannot recommend to build your super high stakes financial uh, service uh, without any prior programming experience. But I would say that it's easier to draft. It's it's very easy to draft and play around on the pre-pro test net, and it's easier for for auditing um, to be done by well other Python engineers even not only the, the Haskell companies that are there right now, but also a whole pool of, of new developers that are now able to, to well assess your, your contract and try to find bugs. Yeah. And, and it, I think it's over 80% of developers are Python fluent, right? So it, it's exactly. a huge pool of developers. Yeah. No, definitely wasn't a, a, a plug for anybody to go and start risking their finances, deploying smart contract. I could see that being uh, an issue for some, but really what we're doing here guys and this is why i absolutely have, have, have loved every minute of having neil's arm is we're trying to show people just what is trying to be achieved here and actually how much it simplifies and breaks things down and and and, and still in a secure manner and is going to open this kind of um what i envision as a floodgate of, of developers coming on and building in the cardano ecosystem and actually you know increase the value all around you know it, it, it's really amazing what you're um doing neil's 
Thank you. One of the things I'm I'm trying to do here uh, that's not visible right now is what's happening around the contract. So if you try to build a smart contract before using Plutus, you usually end up first spending at least a few hours trying to just get up, get the get the programming environment set up, get the the language downloaded, and and all the dependencies resolved, and and then you have to work with that, and this is a Python package. So there's like one command to install the package. And then you can use your favorite uh, development environment. This is PyCharm, but you can also use uh, open source versions, uh, VS Code, all these things. There's there's a whole host of programming alternatives for Python. And that's the big thing here. Uh, and then there's another command and you drops out the, the address, the policy ID, um, all the things you need to then actually build something so yeah I, I hope that also this this environment that the that's created around the contract just simplifies tremendously how you can actually build yeah for well put it this way the fact that i can actually understand what's going on with on here is it's got to be pretty bloody simple for for for, for me to have a sort of uh gist of, of what's taking place Niels, it's been an absolute pleasure again um Maybe in the future we should do a video where I actually come and write a contract and look to deploy it under your um, expert uh, supervision. Yes, um, I would love to. For sure. Niels, it's been an absolute pleasure. Again, all of Niels' socials are in the description. Go ahead and support him on social media, if nothing else. Thank you very much once again, Niels. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs>